Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of no line coloring with some digital images, primarily coloring with Copic markers, but I'll have a watercolor section at the end as well so you can see both work with the same technique. I'm doing this to celebrate my friend Kathy's 30 day coloring challenge that she's now done a second time for this month of June. There's links in the doobly doo, there's lots of discount codes and uh, coupon codes, prizes, giveaways, fun stuff follow along on that. I'm going to use my Edgy Digi series, one of them today, and I thought I'd show them all to you. This is the ones that are done so far. There will be more added to the series as I get some time, but I'm exploring each of the Copic color families in these. For just the five bucks you'll get two digital stamps, and those are images that you can print out on your computer, plus you'll get a multi-page PDF handout that talks about that color family. And if there's a color family that you just can't seem to blend or it really bugs you or there's just something you need to know about that color family, it's a great reason to get these. Or if you just like the images, some people are buying them just for that. But they're a really great educational tool in small bite-sized chunks about those colors. I've done videos on two of them already. There's no voiceovers with them, but shows you different ways to color them. I plan to do all of them eventually when I get to that. But today I wanted to use another one and not use the colors that are in the PDF, but I'm going to be using the Cosmos from the Red Violet one. And I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how you can color it with different colors, but also how to use this as a digital stamp to do no line coloring. As you can see, I wanted my butterfly to be really strong, and originally I was just going to color this in. I printed it out, and look how fat the lines got when I blew up the digital stamp. So if you have a stamp that you want to just highlight a certain area, it's hard to do that without getting a big chunky line around it. So I'm going to use my light box. This is a little light pad. Links for all the supplies, by the way, will be in the doobly-doo down below. And I'm just going to trace it onto my Nina and my watercolor paper. And I'm going to do it with a number two pencil. Nothing special here. But you want to do it as light as you can, a super light touch. And I keep my pencil really sharp so that I have a really thin line. The Copic marker and watercolor will both trap the color underneath of the pencil line, or <laughs> trap the pencil underneath of the color. So you want to make sure that you have as little getting in your way as possible. Let's start with the Copic marker version of coloring this. And what I decided to do was go to the web, which I often do when I'm trying to figure out what colors I want to use on something. And I found this beautiful photo of these multicolor Cosmos. I have planted Cosmos in my garden for eons and eons and eons. I really love them. And I once in a while will get one of these. And like all the other ones are single color ones or something, or the ones there's Cosmos that have color just around the edge, so they almost look like every petal is burned a little bit with the darker color. Um, they don't look burnt, but you know what I mean. And I once in a while will get one of these, and I found out it's a, it's a rare adaptation that Cosmos make. But look, somebody apparently had a whole seed pack that planted them some Cosmos that were all multicolor like this. So I've just picked out a couple of different ones that I wanted to try on this card. So when I took my digital stamp and blew it up, I used just, there's a whole bouquet of these flowers in the digital stamp and I just blew them up really big. And then I wanted to have the butterfly kind of fluttering across them. And then I just went through the, the flowers and started picking out the colors that I wanted. And I'm trying to create a little striations in the petals themselves because they all have these they're kind of wrinkly petals they all have these um, these lines that go up in them up and down the pet the length of the petal but whenever you're looking at any flower some of them radiate outwards toward the side of the petal some of them are curved there's all different kinds of lines in them so it's fun to look on the web and see what kind of interesting flowers you can find and what the petals actually look like and how you can make them look a little bit realistic now you can probably tell that was one of the yellow flowers, but now I want to do that pinkish purplish one off to the right hand side. So I'm looking on my hex chart, which is also available on my blog, to try to find some colors in that, that color range. So I'm going to pick a lighter pinkish color and then a darker pinkish color and try to figure out how to make a color that's going to match approximately at least that flower on the right hand side. And that's one of the things that the hex chart has really helped me with. And I originally developed that just for me. I wasn't really intending to make it a, a big deal to share. 
I just wanted to compare some colors for myself. It's hard to know when you're looking at the caps of markers which ones are going to make a pinkish red and which ones are going to make a purplish red and which ones are going to be more of a tomato orangey red and all different types of shades of every single color and the hex chart really helps to show you the difference between them as well as to give you a little bit of an idea of different colors that might blend together that you wouldn't normally think of because they're all arranged on the hex chart in visual order rather than in numerical order. So on my hex chart page and links to all this of course in that upper right hand corner as well as in the doobly-doo, um, on my hex chart page I've been collecting videos that I've done as well as I've been finding a few that other people have done. If you do any that show how you use the hex chart be sure to ping me some way either email me or um, send me a message or something somehow so that I know and can add the valuable information to that hex chart page. So people who use it um, that RV69 that I, I was looking at on the chart is a color that I, I don't think I've actually ever used it ever ever. <laughs> I own all the markers but there's some that I just never get any love and as soon as I saw that one sitting next to the RV29 that I used I went ah oh, that's gonna be perfect for making some really increased dark shadows on these flowers and look at how it's making that pop immediately just to add that super dark color. Now some people are afraid of dark color you know me I'm not I'm a little crazy about my dark color and I decided to even instead of using the brown that I used on the first one I thought let me try this dark reddish color for the inside because those insides of those flowers um, when you zoom way way in which that photo is not zoomed way in but when I zoomed way in I could see there's a little more reddish color in there than just the brown and different ones have different amounts of it some of them have small centers some of them have wide wider centers but they all have a little bit of that pinkish brownish color mixed in the two of them now I wanted to do one of the white flowers and I started adding first my shadows and I'll show you why as this goes on because if I had ended up using the grays after I did all the stripes like on these other flowers I did all the the striping first and then I added the shadows then the gray would potentially pull some of that color in so if I colored and, and touched the gray marker to some of that red in the stripes on that, that red and white flower that I'm coloring I would probably pull some of that color through the flower and I wanted them the petals to remain pretty white but the shadows you can see are going all the way through the yellow and the red areas so when I go over them with the the actual colors that are in those stripes those shadows are still going to show and so you can see there I'm getting some depth in that gray those gray spots in my yellow even though the gray was colored first it'll be a little less obvious on my reds but you can also see that I'm, ma I'm making a little jumps right there where the uh, the red stripes can kind of go around different parts of different petals so you can add a little bit of fun to them by making those sort of differences as you're going around a flower petal. And that's just when you're doing flower petal stripes like this though. But most people don't do crazy flower petal stripes. It's hard enough to do a flower by itself. But I hope this inspires you to try some multicolor flowers at some point. I will have a link in the doobly-doo to this photo as well and have it on, posted on my blog so you can see what I'm doing. Now the oranges. When you look at the oranges, you can jump over to the reds to do some shadows and some darker colors. And that's what I'm going to try for first because I wanted to push this orange flower more toward the red than toward the browns. And on the hex chart, it kind of shows them closer to the browns. But without having it in three dimensions, it's not possible to have every color that could be next to every other color on one chart. I would love to have some sort of a 3D model. That would be amazing. I have seen it on some watercolor websites, some sort of modeling that they've done to try to, you know, build color families and stuff for paints and when they do the manufacturing and stuff, but I, I don't know how to do that. So you get a PDF with a flat chart to color in the hex chart package that you buy. So here's what it ha what happens now when I've got my R08. There's um, the R0s tend to be a little more on the tomato red side, so they go well with the oranges because they don't have a lot of purpley bluey content in them. And you can see I'm getting some nice dimension here, and the um, the colors that I'm using with the YRs 
blend really well. This flower is turned kind of at an angle, so I'm trying to create some sort of places where the, the petals flip and that sort of thing. You can make them a lot simpler than this. You don't have to color them quite that crazy. And I'm going to add my center, and I, for whatever reason, went back to my brown instead of my reddish color that I had liked so much. But I'll add more on top of it as well and just kind of blend multicolors together. But now I want to look for a dark color. And if I go to the darks and the reds, they go purpley. So I want to go for a dark in the brown section to add to this orange flower, to add some real pop to it. Because I like the pop that I got in that red-violet flower over on the right, and I wanted the same kind of contrast on this one. So if I had, I could go with the purplier reds here, certainly possible, but I found that for this particular one, since I wanted it to feel more orange, then I wanted it over on the other side. And I'm going a little bit over my butterfly right now. Um, you can see I've colored over the edge of him because I'm gonna make the outline black anyway. So it, it's not gonna matter that I'm coloring over top of it. And here I decided that um, having a little bit of differentiation in the centers, pulling out that dark color from the, um, from the center in, into the division between the petals really made a difference. For my little butterfly, I decided I wanted to have some colors blending and I'm going over the pencil. Now this is making some of the pencil drag and it's definitely making it mushy. You're not gonna see a lot of that once I get done because I'm gonna add a black outline, but I went for a B, BG15, YG13, a Y13. You notice all the, the 1513, 1312s. These are all numbers that are similar to each other. So when you're trying to get a blend like this, picking numbers that both of them are around the same number works really great. Now these are my new Copic Multiliner SPs. That means the SPs are replaceable. You can replace the ink you, and refill the ink. You can replace the nibs and stuff. And I've put my little cheat sheets on these. There's going to be a cheat sheet download on my blog so you can print the full size sheet of paper and know exactly the width of these if you want to buy just one of the markers and know what size you need to get because people have been asking me what size would be an average number that you would need. So I'm going to use the point three here and I'm going to just trace around the outlines. You can see there's a little mushiness from the pencil lines, but you're not going to see that again. I, I've got my butterfly digi stamp right next to where I'm at so I can see what the original stamp looked like, but I'm also modifying it a little bit. I'm making these shapes really simple. I'm not adding multiple layers, you know, like multiple thicknesses between some of these shapes. Um, I just want, I, it doesn't need to be that complex when I'm drawing it by hand. And then I'm just going to draw some shapes on the outside here. Since I'm using multi-liners, these are Copic friendly. And this particular one is a brush nib. Look how tiny that brush nib is. They're Copic friendly. So it means that I can color back into some of those areas after I'm finished. And so some of those spots that may not have blended as well, or if I want to add a little different color, I can do that after doing my work with the black pen. If you use a non-Copic friendly pen, your ink is going to bleed and you could ruin your nibs. So just be careful if you're going to do that. Make sure that you don't do this black work until you're absolutely sure that everything is kosher with your, um, with your line drawing. All right, here is the finished Copic card. And I've added some sentiments from a Simon Says stamp set and put it on a layer and added some May Arts ribbon. And I think it came out really pretty. This is going to be for a friend of mine who just needs to know she's not alone. And now I'm going to use my Holbein watercolors. These are new. I haven't shown these yet. I have a whole video coming up on Thursday, I think it is. Friday. No, Friday. With a whole thing on the Holbein watercolors. And then this weekend, a whole lot more on watercolor. But I thought I'd show them to you. They're really fun. They're very expensive. But they worked the same for coloring these flowers as far as using the digital stamp adding it to the watercolor paper using the same tracing technique and I'm adding my colors in layer after layer after layer letting some of the ones down below dry first that's why I'm going around a lot of it and I also don't want to touch things to something wet next to it so that it doesn't end up bleeding before I'm ready for it to bleed so I'm trying to control when it actually does that and when it doesn't and you can just watch the buildup of layers, which I find, find really fun when I'm doing it at speed because even I'm amazed 
that this actually comes out <laughs> really nice at the end. I loved how this whole thing kind of worked out. It was it was pretty special to see that this worked. I wasn't originally intending on doing both the watercolor and the Copic in this video because I haven't tried no line coloring and I wasn't sure especially about this butterfly and the amount of detail in it but it came out really pretty as well and I was really excited with both of these and now I'm gonna wait for another friend to need to know that she's not alone so I have another card to send to her alrighty so I am going to jet now this has been a ridiculously long video I hope you will visit my uh, other videos here that I'm sharing with you. One is on marker maintenance and if you're getting started on the 30-day challenge marker maintenance might be something that you want to do and I'm also showing you on the right hand side some clean color pen work which is a whole lot of fun new product out there and I'm really enjoying those. Alright I will see you in a couple days. Take care and bye-bye.